Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Morton, and we are going to have so much fun on this episode. You are not going to believe what we have in store for you. And before we get fully into all the fun this week, part of the reason that we are going to have so much fun is that we are talking about the Highland Games. Yes, of course. Now, the Highland Games are back in Moncton in person and open to the public for the first time since the pandemic. And this year, the Moncton Highland Games is the host games for the Scottish Masters Athletics International Masters World Championships, which is a huge mouthful. Yeah. It basically <laughs> means that the top heavy events athletes over the age of 40 from around the world are coming here in June. It's so unbelievable. June 17th to 19th at the Halibets Field, downtown Moncton, all six ball fields, the entire property is going to be full of music, vendors, petting zoos, Highland cattle, Highland dancing, bagpipes, the heavy events, and what we're going to talk about today. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, a live podcast. A live podcast taping. <laughs> Not this podcast. <laughs> nope. One of Tosh's other podcasts. <laughs> One of my many other podcasts. Yes. If you're a redhead or know a redhead, tell them about the Authentic Ginger podcast, and we're going to do like a redhead gathering on the uh -huh. 18th for a live tape. show. Yeah. yeah, that is going to be so much fun. And you're actually going to be on what's called the Lowland stage, which is very close to what else we're going to talk about today. I'm super pumped about this. Next to the Lowland stage, you will find the Maritime Sword School. And we have the founder, Miles Kinney, here with us today. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I certainly appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming in. And as someone who's involved with the Highland Games this year, I am so excited that your school exists and is going to do its first real competition at the Highland Games. It's pretty exciting for us too, okay? It's been uh, quite the journey and you know, this hasn't been an easy thing to get off the ground for us, all right? So what we specifically do is called HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts, but you might want to think of it as historical fencing, okay? And we'll, we'll think of it like this, okay? So, swords, right? Everybody knows swords. Everybody knows swords. They've been around for about 3,000 years, right? They must have worked if they were around for so long, right? But, but when we watch them on TV and whatnot, we see lots of crazy huge actions. We see lots of stuff that we just know. We just know it's fake, right? There must be a better way. Well, guess what? <laughs> okay, the 100% is, all right? And it's not something that's made up or theory crafted or anything like that. It's real historical fighting systems, okay? That's why we called it a martial art. So imagine that you live your life by the sword. Imagine you're a medieval knight. Imagine you're an officer in the Queen's Navy, okay? And you have a beautiful custom-made saber. Imagine that you're a hussar, a horse soldier, with the, uh, with the winged hussars in Poland, okay? And you live your life by the sword and, uh, you know, probably end up dying by the sword. But uh, you need a real martial system to use it, okay? and that's where we come in at Maritime Sword School. We take all of the real martial systems that were written down in medieval and Renaissance times in the Regency era, we take those and we turn them into curriculums. Then using those curriculums, we create a modern martial art with them, okay? Now, Hima isn't something that's new. In fact, it's one of the mar oldest martial arts that you can be doing, but it's in a renaissance right now. About 20, 25 years ago, a bunch of well-meaning nerds looked at what was happening at like renaissance fairs and all this stuff and, and what's happening in Hollywood and all that stuff, and they just, and they just went, BS. <laughs> This is BS, right. right? That isn't what a sword fight looks like. That isn't what violence looks like. That isn't how people move when they fight. It's just nonsense, okay? And everybody who's showing up at these things, they look like morons, <laughs> okay? So there, there's a real place there for, for a new way to do these things to start to emerge. And what happened is we see all of these communities all over the world went and started taking these manuals and started looking at them and saying, okay, well, let's actually distill this down to, into, a, into a real martial art, okay? And that's what happened. And it's being put through the modern sport lens, okay? And with the modern sport lens, we've been able to develop modern training equipment, okay, that's safe, that really suits the purpose for what we do. Alrighty, and we were able to do it in a context that doesn't alienate people because there's no these, there's no thous, okay? If you wanna wear the puffy pants, great, go for it. Wear the puffy pants, I don't care, okay? But they have to be puncture resistant puffy pants. 
Okay. <laughs> 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 In case, I love it. In case a sword breaks, <laughs> okie dokie. And that's that's really where we're where we're coming from. Okay. Now at the Highland Games, this is going to be very exciting because mm -hmm. we're bringing back what's a real um, spectacle from um, from the golden age of sail already, and we're going to be showing people single stick. All right, mm -hmm. ladies, would you please grab some single sticks? Oh yes, oh, we yes. Will. We have oh, props fantastic. today. This right. is the best. Now begin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoa, okay, whoa. This wow. is what we want to do. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like yeah, we're missing some of the safety here. here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, right. These are just gorgeous. bamboo, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's rattan, okay. And rattan, rattan, oh, rattan yeah. is used specifically because of how it degrades and how it breaks. Okay, huh. when a piece of rattan great breaks, you can see it coming because it's actually a grass and it's comprised of strands that run lengthwise. Okay, and they'll start to shed, and then when it snaps, it will. Um, when it snaps, part will hang off instead of flying across the room. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a great um, safety feature. Yeah. But uh, yeah. traditionally, <laughs> when we're looking at uh, British martial arts, um, uh, British art or martial arts from the Celtic Isles, of which there are many, or from mm -hmm. the British Isles rather, in Celtic culture, there's all kinds of st great stuff to to look at there if you're interested. Um, because all of these cultures had their own had their own like folk wrestling systems. Oh, they yeah. all had their own specific weapons that they like to use, and it's probably written down already. But what we're looking at here is a very accessible trainer for mm. a Highland broadsword or British military saber. Okay, and there's kind of one of the steel trainers that we would use for the same system. Alrighty. Now, of course, the Highlanders had a fearsome reputation, a very fearsome reputation, well earned. One that still um, carries on today, okay? Mm -hmm. If you think about the nomenclature of how some uh, Canadian regiments are named, they're still called Highlanders. These people aren't Scottish, but it's the name, right? The name struck fear into people. So yep. Highland Broadsword became a real marketing thing for swordsmen who were attempting to teach swordsmen in the British Isles, all righty? Now, for our Highland Broadsword and British Military Sabre curriculum, what we use is a book called Charles Rower's Art of Defense, which was first published in 1798. All right, there were four editions, but we really used the edition that was published in 1824. It's the best one, all righty. Um, and he actually, he was a publisher himself, and he published Jane Eyre. Okay, so oh, he cool. printed he printed that at at his shop, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Regardless, though, okay, <laughs> what we have here is a fantastic system for somebody who's interested in learning real swordsmanship. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you do modern fencing, modern sword sport fencing is amazing. Okay, but it's suicidal. The tactics are completely suicidal. It's just <laughs> bam, into each other. Okay, reset, <laughs> bam, into each other again. Reset, mm -hmm. bam. Both people get stabbed every time. Okay, that doesn't work, right? Right, who knows how to, how to stitch you up? Who knows how to stitch you up in 1796? Who knows how to stitch you up in 1420? Right? Um, who yeah. knows how to stop you from getting gangrene, okay? <laughs> Don't get hit. Mm. All right? And that's why the first system people learns, learn with us is called the art of defense. Because it teaches you how to not get hit. <laughs> okay. I like the sound of that. That's yeah. a good sound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> and of course, we use that those trainers over there for people to start with because they're so cheap. They're so accessible, mm. okay? Martial arts in general are expensive. Sport mm. in general is expensive. By starting people out with single stick, they can get started doing it for cheap and then they can figure out if they like it and they can figure it out if they can handle a sport where you score points by hitting someone with a stick. Okay? And possibly a 53 inch long steel stick. Yeah. If you, mm. if you stick with it. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, so for, so we tra train lots of systems. One of the, the, my favorite quotes from uh, Ringek, um, who's, um, who's probably my primary source for my medieval material that I, that I train. He says that if you scare easily, don't learn fencing. Okay. All right. That sounds like good advice. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, it's, and it's so funny because you see that so clearly when people will come and join the class. You know, I've, I've had some really hilarious moments where like, you know, Chad Thunderfist will, like, will show up who's a natural athlete, right? And he gets his butt kicked by someone with autism who's, who's a serious martial artist, mm -hmm. right? And, and they can't reconcile it. Right, they, 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 can't, they can't reconcile it, right? Because this is skill-based. This right. is very highly skill-based, mm -hmm. and if you don't do the repetitions, then, then you can't do it well. 
right? So, on at yeah. the Highland yeah. Games, mm. we we're going to have such a good time, okay? <laughs> we have people coming from all over Atlantic Canada, which is very exciting for me. This community has been slowly building, so I founded Maritime Sword School six years ago, okay? Six years ago, and we were the only game in town. Great. Now today, six years later, there are three Maritime Sword School clubs in three different provinces, and to my knowledge, there are seven historical European martial arts clubs in Atlantic Canada. Wow. And this is the Fantastic. first um, regional historical European martial arts tournament in Atlantic Canada, okay? And that's a really big deal for us. Yes. Because our goal is to make this a mainstream activity, okay? We want to cross over mm. so that this is a mainstream activity, right? So that people who maybe think there's no place for them in sport, who maybe think that like they enjoy something that's a little bit weird, no, 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 there's a place in sport for you mm -hmm. that you can really engage with and really enjoy and a really serious, fantastic martial art that you can do at any level you want. You can travel all around the world doing this, okay? Mm. And now you have access to it in Atlanta, Canada. And that's pretty fantastic. radical. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. fantastic. Tell us a little bit more about some of the other swords that you brought, because it you were telling be us a little bit before we went on air, and they're just they're it incredible. Would, all of it them. would be my pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Keep going. So, okay, let's grab some small swords here. Okay. okay. So. We start by teaching people a striking style, okay? We start by teaching people a striking style, okay? And that's what yep. we have over These here in the single sticks, right. all right? Mm -hmm. After about a year of that striking style, you can start using full weight trainers. Okie dokie. Um, a full weight trainer, that's about 900 grams, okay? That's about 900 grams. To put that in context, that single stick, two to 300 grams. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. light. Okay? Yeah. Um, a modern <laughs> fencing hole foil, about 300 grams. A 900 gram trainer is two pounds, okay? And that weight greatly informs how you use it. Right. Greatly informs, and it really exposes what baloney a lot of quote unquote swordsmanship is when you have to be in control of something that's two pounds and it's operating on the small joint of your wrist with centrifugal force. Mm -hmm. All right, it really exposes how terrible people's conditioning is on their, uh, on their small <laughs> joints and hands, right? Because uh, honestly, someone who's not conditioned, you can just knock it out of their hand because their hands aren't imagine. strong enough. We call it, oh, yeah. it hema hands. Right. Um, and, and it's always fun for human practitioners to try to crush the life out of someone's hand <laughs> <Yeah>. when, they, <laughs> when they first meet them. So after you learn a striking style, which is, you know, British, Scottish in origin, okay. It's actually a little bit Hungarian too, um, but we won't worry about that, okay? <laughs> it's all good, we'll it's all good. We'll look at the small sword, okay? Now, being in a bilingual province, it's really important to me that we offer something from, you know, different cultures, right? Because the French and the English, we're stuck with each other, okay? <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're doing it together, okay? So if we're offering an English system, we're offering a French system too, okay? No, I'm no great shakes at speaking French, okay? But you know what? I know a thing or two about French historical systems, all right? Specifically, Angelo's small sword, okay? And um, this is the sort of trainer we'd be looking at there, okay? So this is a contemporary to what we see with the British mil military saber or the Highland broadsword, okay? It would have existed at about the same time. And now this is something that maybe an up-and-coming officer in Paris might find very fashionable. Okay, oh. very, very fashionable, okay? I, I love these things, okay? First up, you can wear them. You can actually wear you them. You make it look very dainty. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so think, about, think about a rapier. Yeah. Like, rapiers are huge. They wear four, like three to four pounds. People don't realize mm. that. Like a system where you have to hold yeah. uh, like that much weight out like yeah. this for an extended no. period of time, extremely That's difficult, okay? And they, fi and they figured that out. You know, they started to figure that out, that actually you could get away with, you know, a one pound trainer. That you could get, like, if all, if all it really is is a point on a stick, that you can get away with a one pound trainer and it's gonna, it's gonna do the job, it's gonna go in, right? Um, and that's really all, all you're trying to do with it, okay? So you started to see these emerge, okay? Um, and of course, um, it's a beautiful system. I really love it. We do teach it to people second because it's more of a finesse system, okay? With single mm. stick, you can brawl a little bit, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can brawl a little bit. They don't hit that hard, you know. If you're wearing your, if you're wearing your jacket, wearing your equipment, here I'll throw on a jacket yeah. here, okay? If you're wearing your your proper protective HEMA protective equipment that's specially made for our sport by a whole host of uh, suppliers, okay? Then you don't have to worry so much about getting hit with a single stick, okay? You're gonna be totally fine. Who wants to hit me with a single stick? <laughs> <laughs> Charles is nodding <laughs> over there, okay. Oh, oh, hit me with a single stick. Hold on, let me put on my mask here, okay? Oh, yeah. Which is so heavy. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. it's... <laughs> do, do you want your lobster right claws too, or...? Ah, oh, that's fine. Okay. It's just a... 
Hit me! I've, I've, hit me! Hit <laughs> <laughs> me! Oh, yeah, close. like you could, like. Close. Oh, just, like, bounce, bounces off. I don't, I don't even I'm know not. if I'd score those. <laughs> yeah, I don't even not. know if I'd score those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It would take me a bit to work out that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's imbalanced. I don't have the gear on. It's not like you can hit me back. So. Oh. And she just <laughs> met him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the funny. mom in me, it's too, funny, right? Though, it's like, funny, though. I was telling her to hit me harder, right? Now, here's the thing. There's a real balance, okay, between hitting hard and hitting too hard, okay? We love our training partners. We love people from other clubs who show up, and we're not going to try to murder them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like right. you said, there's, there's rules around but it. But the reality yeah. is that swords are not lightsabers. And when people watch <laughs> Hollywood stuff, they think, oh, you know, it's just it's going to go through like butter. It's not going to go through like butter. If you have bad cutting <laughs> technique, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be like hitting them with a stick. Okay, and somebody whose blood is up and adrenaline is pumping, that isn't going to stop them, right? It just won't. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so your technique in the cut is really important, okay? And part of that, you have to hit hard enough to actually do something, okay? So when you show up at the games and you're watching, and you're watching this as a spectator, okay, bear that in mind. That like, if you just see someone like trying to push through and lightly touch, okay, and we don't call it, yeah, it's because it wouldn't have cut them. It's because it wouldn't have stopped the person who, who was coming in, so why would we call it, right? We're looking Makes for sense. valid, clean strikes that are going to shut down your opposition. Okie dokie, because when people's blood are, uh, is up, we have so many examples of, um, uh, we have so many first-hand accounts of hand-to-hand -hand combat um, with swords that we know full well that these things aren't lightsabers and that people are superhuman. Right, mm. and, and that to shut someone down, it's we're not gonna get too much into that, okay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, like, yeah. but like, but like, but like in our, in our in our sport, like, yeah, it's it's not flicky. It's the real deal, okay? It's okay. a real combat sport. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I want to talk a bit about safety, and if you wanted to take your jacket off while I ask you the question, that's I feel so I feel so strong you, and cool you feel in safe. my jacket. Well, <laughs> I do feel <laughs> safe. These girls, I don't know. Hit <laughs> <laughs> me? Did you see that? <laughs> we have a proof. Where do I? Where do I <laughs> Rogers, right? Well, oh, uh, yeah. my lawyer will be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Just with her, though. Yeah. So uh, every every one of the swords that you brought in today, yep. they're yep. all dull. Yep. Right. So uh, first of all, I need to know: is that a safety feature, or is that realistic in real life? They would have been like, because you always see them sharpening mm. them and whatever. Yeah, were of they course. Actually, sharp, or Absolutely. were they dull? Absolutely. Okay. So imagine this, okay? Imagine, say, we'll go, we'll go to medieval times, okay? Because that's my primary system is actually medieval knightly martial arts, um, which I love dearly. I don't know if we'll have time to get too into them. But imagine this, okay? Your sword is actually a real status symbol, okay? Right. Swords are hard to make. Swords are hard to make today with a CNC and a mill. Okay, we're using mm. modern production mm. techniques, okay, and having light and having thermometers. And having thermometers for your heat treat to be able to tell how hot the steel actually is, which is going to determine how it crystallizes in the hardening process um, to actually create a usable tool. Um, now imagine that this is 600 years ago. Yeah. 700 years yeah. ago, there's only one guy in the city who knows how to do it right. Or two guys in the city, right? And his mm -hmm. apprentices, and, and, and he guards his secrets pretty closely. Mm. Right. And you're on a wait list to get that sword. You're on a wait list today to get a HEMA <laughs> yeah. sword, by the way. I'm on a five month wait right now for a, uh, for a new saber. Holy. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Regardless, though, so imagine that, that these things are hard to obtain, they're hard to make. Okie dokie. And now you finally have your beautiful long sword, okay? And. It, you want to keep it nice, mm -hmm. okay? Because that thing's supposed to save your life. When it, when it really comes down to it, when it matters, that beautiful object that you have that you've been training with since you were a child to learn how to use effectively, um, it, it has to stay in good shape. The edge has to be sharp. Okay. Okay, the edge has to be sharp. The edge has to have a specific profile in order hmm. to be sharp. Okay, in order for it to actually do what you want it to do when you when you strike whoever. Okie dokie. Yeah. Um, so to that end, you need to keep it safe, all right? So now, yeah, go mm. ahead and grab yeah. that one. I'll hold these. Go for it, okay? So now when we're dealing with these trainers here, okay, now this is something that's actually historically accurate, okay? And this will be called a fader short or a feather blade. 
Okay, a fader sword or a feather blade, okay? And this is something that's historically accurate because what this is going to do is it's going to let you tr practice your swordsmanship and your, specifically your German long sword, okay, without destroying your real sword. And it's going to be really nice and easy for your training partner because you can see that the weight distribution is weird, right? Yes, it is, yeah. The weight distribution is back towards the hill. So that means when somebody goes, hi and smacks someone else in the head, you know, and they're wearing a mask, right? Um, it means that they don't get a concussion because a lot of the weight is back in, is back in the handle, okay? Okay. Then beyond that, okay, so hold it up flat, parallel to the floor. Okay, put one hand on the, on the tip. Yeah, there you go. Now push. You'll be all right. Just push. Push harder. <laughs> oh, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, there, there you go. go. There we go. Look at that bend. They flex. Yeah. <laughs> they flex, okay? So that means that when you thrust into somebody, okay, it has this big spatulated tip, so it's not going to, you know, do any Punch damage, it? right? <laughs> and it's going to flex to absorb the force of that thrust, okay? So it's interesting. We, it's a modern sport, but you know what? All that historical stuff, they knew it back then. They do it back in. The jackets they'd be wearing were quite similar to that one. Hmm. Now, you know, they'd have more of a, a certain Renaissance flair. Right, right, right. of course. People <laughs> don't realize this, uh, again, just because, you know, there's so many misconceptions in TV. But you know what medieval and Renaissance people loved? Bright colors that showed off their status in life. Yeah. Mm. They loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yellow, green, whatever, the brightest, wildest stuff. Like if you look up pictures of like Landstadt, which would be like German uh, mercenaries in the Holy Roman Empire, which is contemporary to the uh, longsword system that, uh, that we teach, these guys, they look absurd. They yeah. look absurd. They're wearing like puffy pants and like hose with like puffy sleeves. That's in eight different like colors. And there's like all these like weird like cloth coming off. Yeah. But do you know what though? Not only did it look amazing it, to them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to them, it was effective. All right, because all that puffy clothes would actually stop somebody from cutting you with a sharp sword. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like people don't. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. yeah. Like pe people, yeah. people don't realize that. Okay. And it would be distracting too, right? Oh, like, absolutely. <laughs> well, you should, yeah. No need for camouflage. You're just gonna go. Oh, look at me. <laughs> That's so funny. So imagine that. Imagine like come, uh, facing off across the battlefield, and you look across, and there's a thousand Germans with huge beards, and they're all wearing their brightest colors with like puffy clothes <laughs> yeah. on, and, like breastplates and helmets, and they all have 18 foot long pikes, yeah. and they move in perfect unison. Right, yeah, be uh, like that's it would, like be that, it would be terrifying. Like that's kind, of, like that's kind. Of, that's when the Highlanders come out with the kilts and the bagpipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and exactly, even more that's exactly right, yeah. folks. Yeah. The Highlanders had such a ferocious reputation, alrighty. And you have to think about it, like these high, screaming Highland tribes coming down from the mountains to raid yep. like Northern English um, settlements. Yeah. Right, it's really quite a terrifying thing. Absolutely. Um, it's yeah, a wonderful thing, it is. and we can do it. I we know. We can all do it together. Maritime Sword School on Facebook. <laughs> Why did it take me so long to plug it? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and we're getting to the point. We're getting to the point in the show where that's what exactly you have to do because we're going to have to wrap it up. So you well, are going to have to. I yes, have to go back to I know. work. I, I know. Back to real life. I know. Us but. Yeah. <laughs> So aside from the fact that everyone can see this in action at the Highland Games, yep. June 18th and 19th. So the 18th mm -hmm. is a competition, 19th is demonstrations on the field. That's right. But if people want to actually learn more and find you mm -hmm. outside of that, here's your chance. Tell them. Where do they, where do they find out everything they Type need to know? Type your Facebook, Maritime Sword School. It's going to be so easy. You're going to see this squid, OK? This squid, you're in the right place, OK? Just shoot us a message, OK? Shoot yep. us a message like the reality with us, um, you know, especially in, the, in like Moncton here, is that like we don't do crazy recruitment drives, okay? We let people find us and we grow organically so that our capacity to serve the community grows organically with the, with the membership, okay? So we don't do big marketing drives. You'll never see like, you know, paid advertisements for MSS or any of that stuff, right? But if you're interested, yeah, we want you to come out and we don't care, you know, whether you think you belong or not because you do. This is an inclusive club. You belong here as part of it if you are interested interested in real swordsmanship, okay? So Maritime Sword School on Facebook, come on out, have some fun, and on the 18th, you're gonna have an amazing time watching our guys and the folks from um, Medieval Swordplay Canada on Bridgewater and Annapolis Valley Hema and Maritime Sword School in Charlottetown, and of course, your hometown heroes, the MSS Moncton <laughs> Gang, who's gonna just be uppercutting people to the moon. Oh, they're, on the <laughs> they're, on, they're on the field.
field. <laughs> I, oh hope, my goodness. I hope I've been training them for two years. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Miles, thank you so much for coming in. If you're looking for more information about the Highland Games too, just moncktonhighlandgames.com. Schedules, pricing, everything you want to know is on there. Mm -hmm. Remember, you'll see Tosh doing her Authentic Ginger podcast live on Saturday morning. Except for I might go learn how to yeah. do this instead. Well, they're going to be right <laughs> next to each other. It's perfect. Thanks, you, everyone, for watching, for listening, and we'll see you again next week.